the scale of the threat is huge. Three terrorist attacks this year, 35 dead. Five attacks have been stopped in the past four months. Some have told Newsnight it's time for a new approach. Is this the future of counter-terrorism in the UK? A fixed surveillance camera monitors people coming out of a building. Most are not on any terrorist watch list. But this person is, and his face is recognised automatically, triggering an alert. With 23,000 now on the terrorist watch list, is this the way forward? It's absolutely impossible to use conventional means against that, that number of people. It can't be done, just doing the arithmetic. The number of people required, it cannot be done. The technology is able to do that job right now, and therefore it is the responsibility of society, politicians, to decide what is the appropriate way that that might be deployed. We do need a debate if we're going to start to use the images in a more intimate, a more aggressive, a more, a more defined way. After the suicide bombing at the Manchester Arena in May, the security service MI5 let it be known that 23,000 people in the UK have had links to violent Islamist extremism. 3,000 are a current threat and 20,000 have recent links. We know some of them are high up on those lists and are getting constant attention. And we know also that people may be way down the list, may have featured a few years ago, gone very quiet, and all of a sudden they become activated and carry out a terrorist outrage. It's a huge challenge for society as to how we deal with all these people who are potential suspects. The conditions down there are extremely difficult, but they're proceeding as quickly as they can. Andy Trotter and was Deputy Chief can, Constable the of the British Transport Police at the time of the London bombings in 2005, and Chief Constable after that. Protecting crowded spaces has been central to his 45-year police career. The dreadful events of the last few weeks you know, should stick in our minds forever. They should not fade away. We've got to be vigilant all the time and not let our guard down. And we must use the latest technology to take that fight to the terrorists. Both the leader of the Manchester attack, Salman Abedi, and Kurum Bas, the leader of the London Bridge Rampage 12 days later, were known extremists. But they were assessed to be low priority. They were on the radar, but not under the microscope when they attacked. With 23,000 on the list, how do we as a society monitor that number? There is a technique called automatic face recognition that could help. It uses the images of faces taken from cameras deployed either overtly or covertly. The kind of automatic face recognition we're talking about relies on machine learning and artificial intelligence. Basically, where computers teach themselves to identify people more effectively. Newsnight revealed that this technique was used in live surveillance operations before and after recent terrorist attacks in Manchester and in London. A small British company called Digital Barriers has developed an advanced face recognition system. We set up a simple scenario using actors to show how it works. This is a typical surveillance camera, except this one is loaded with the facial recognition capability. So now you can see that it's capturing everyone that's coming out of this doorway, typical crowded space. So you've got an unknown on the left, you've got the, this person who's a high risk on the right. Yeah, so what do we see here? Somebody who's on our list has been spotted coming out of this entrance by a typical unmanned surveillance camera. And then if you look at the top left hand side of the screen, because that's registered a match, now what we'll see is the identity of that person who's come through that doorway and that alert will go to, to the right place. And this could be one of many, many thousands of such cameras in use every single day of the week, looking for people against that database all of the time. The system uses an artificial intelligence technique called machine learning. You feed the computer, you know, millions of reference images where you know what the results are, and the computer knows those results as well. And then when you feed it images that it hasn't seen before, then it's able to infer what they might be what we allow the system to do is to learn to become ever better at the job of recognising people as they go out and about. The system's designers say it can even work in bad light. When we did our experiment, it recognised faces through glass. So we look at multiple reference points on a person's face. 
And then in essence, what, what we do is we create a map, so a biometric map of the face, which is just code. And that is then compared to the same maps that are created as people pass a camera. It even recognises targets from moving images taken on a smartphone. The use of video is key. It enables the system to analyse thousands of frames. It has been used in a whole range of surveillance applications. Real surveillance operations? Genuine surveillance applications. So should these tactics be used to monitor known extremists? A source who spent much of his career at the top of UK policing says it's time for a new approach to mitigate the terror threat, and he believes that most of the public will accept it. He says the UK's counter-terrorism tactics are out of date. Current counter-terrorism tactics were developed in response to Irish terrorism. From the 1970s on, terrorist networks were infiltrated, bugs and probes were placed, suspects physically tracked. But this approach takes a lot of surveillance officers on the ground. We recreated a classic surveillance operation or follow to demonstrate the resources required. We spoke to a former surveillance officer who spent five years working for the Metropolitan Police. Essentially, we have the first operative follows in the same side of the pavement all the way to the corner, at which point they'll disengage and carry straight on because he's turned left. The operative from this side of the street will cross over and re-engage with him on the left-hand turn, and the operative at the far end of the street will be the, the now primary position in the follow. That sounds like a labour-intensive process. Yes, it is. And that's without considering that you may need to have extra vehicles with extra crews on board, um, extra bodies on the ground, changeover shifts, and potentially somebody on overwatch, which would be operating the cameras or the remote viewing equipment or even on the rooftops. Another former surveillance officer told me that he's seen some MI5 operations that used 40 people to trail one target over 24 hours. It is a hugely labour intensive, huge, and these people may do nothing. They might do nothing for months, years. And all the time, you know, there might be others who need even more attention. And of course, that diverts resources from other things. If we can use this technology sensibly, uh, do it uh, with good oversight, good judicial oversight, because there are obviously clearly civil liberties issues uh, here. But I think the overriding civil liberty is keeping our society safe. And if we can use modern technology, then we should. But if an alert is triggered, what action should be taken? If an alarm is rung through your camera system picking up one of these people, what do you actually do? Because at that stage, all you've got is a positive identification of somebody on a watch list. Do they represent a threat? Are they planning some form of attack? Are they, are they just going about their normal business, popping down to see their mum or, or going out shopping? At London Bridge, protective rails have been installed, but face recognition could offer a broader approach. In rising order of controversy, you could use it with targeted investigations, monitoring people entering and leaving an address, for example, or use multiple cameras to protect crowded spaces like stations, or the systems could become as ubiquitous as CCTV to build patterns of behaviour of suspects. You can take a database of multiple tens of thousands of people. So what are the patterns behind people's behaviour? So um, how many different times have people on a list of those that you may be interested in visited certain types of locations or been in the same location at the same time as other people that you may have interest of? But what are the implications for civil liberties? This power is being used in secret. We haven't had a conversation as a society about how it should be used, if it should be used at all, where it should be used. And so what we need now is to have that conversation and we need to interrogate whether we are willing for something that can be very invasive, that can have a real impact on innocent people's freedoms every day, whether we're willing to have that installed in our society and what we need to make sure that we're protected from it going wrong. If you protected every single crowded place, then people would, would feel that they were living under, under some form of surveillance society. So wh where does the balance end? The biggest attack on our civil liberties is the murder of our children and the murder of people on, in Manchester and in London. Yes, there will be an intrusion, of course there will. But I think that there's a price to pay if we can protect our society against the terrorist threat. The London bombings in 2005 remain Britain's worst terrorist attack. 
Back then, Newsnight revealed that the leader, Mohammed Sadiq Khan, featured in surveillance before the attack. He slipped through the net. With an ever-lengthening watch list, some say the trade-off between intrusion and security must change. I'm concerned about civil liberties, as is anybody. But I'm even more concerned about making sure we use the best kit we can to take the fight to the terrorists. We, you know, we do not want to be having you know, memorial services. We do not want to be thanking the Blue Light Services for their outstanding response. We don't want to be doing this anymore. And anything we can do to fight the terrorists and serious criminals, we should be using. Advanced face recognition will never replace conventional intelligence gathering. But it could help manage the watch list Given the scale of the threat, will society accept it?